No way, dude. No way is this idea actually being talked about. Now, if you know this YouTube channel, you know we like to go over all the rumors, all the discussion, all of the ideas that float around in the hockey world. I know the last video on this channel also was a Montreal Canadiens trade rumor video, but this one is one you may want to pay attention to. Because today, we are talking about the Pittsburgh Penguins and the Montreal Canadiens, and we are turning to one of the most acclaimed sports personalities in Pennsylvania, Mark Madden. Now, if you're a fan of the NFL, if you're a fan of the NHL, you've probably seen Mark Madden's takes on Steelers stuff, Penguins stuff. He's one of the more well-known sports commentators in North America, just in general. And while what he says sometimes may not be all too accurate or maybe smart, the fact is he is an entertaining personality that always goes out there and delivers a good show, and you can't just help but listen to what he says and how he says it, because there's a good entertainment value to the show that he gives, which is why he is such a popular sports commentator. The other day, he published an article on TribLive.com talking about how Patrick Hornquist was a player that, when acquired by the Pittsburgh Penguins, changed that team. Madden suggests that Josh Anderson could do the same. So pause, before we get into the trade idea and the article itself, let's go over Josh Anderson. Long story short, he's a forward that has been absolutely snakebitten this year. He has two assists and zero goals in 22 games played this year. Last year, Anderson was scoring at about a 25 goal pace on the season. This year, he is down to literally zero. Not to mention the fact that he's making $5.5 million a year till the end of 26-27 at 29 years old currently. This is a player that certainly is not playing up to the pay grade of his dollar amount. In fact, it's so bad that you had yourselves Andy and Rono the other day tweet out Josh Anderson's overall player card for 23-24. And long story short, the guy is literally in the bottom one percentile of NHL players in terms of quality of play. He's in the bottom 11 percentile of defensive coverage, but bottom 1 percentile of offensive coverage. Interestingly enough, part of the reason Josh Anderson even has a point in the offensive category is because he is in the top 1 percent of players when it comes to drawing penalties. He draws a lot of them, which is great. But when it comes to the production, when it comes to the shooting, when it comes to everything else, he's not great. Definitely not somebody who is up the pay grade right now. And the problem is, we talked about this in the other video a few days ago, but Josh Anderson's play has been so bad that when you look at the stats that were isolated by RDS, turns out that every line mate that Anderson has this season has played better without Josh Anderson than they ever had with him. All of their numbers, all of their fancy stats, all of their analytics, they all improved when getting separated from Josh Anderson. They all declined when they were playing with Anderson. So it's tough, right? Really difficult situation for a player that's making a lot of money, but there could be some sort of a saving grace here. Because Mark Madden, in this article right here from Tuesday, November 28th, that in which the link will be in the description if you want to go ahead and read it yourself, goes out there and says this. The Pittsburgh Penguins have shown signs of life, especially against strong foes, but they don't look like a good bet to win a playoff series for the first time since 2018, or even a lock to make the playoffs. The Penguins remain stale, not least on the power play. The article then brings up a little bit of a history lesson, saying that, hey, it's tough to make trades, there are salary cap limitations, but Kyle Dubas might be able to learn from history. In 2014, then-Penguins GM Jim Rutherford traded James Neal to Nashville for Patrick Hornquist. The trade wasn't initially well-received by a lot of Pens fans because James Neal was a 40-goal guy. He was fast, flashy, and a good linemate for Malkin. Hornquist seemed plodding by comparison. But Hornquist changed the Penguins. He was physical, he battled down low, he went to the blue paint, he provided the net front presence on the power play. The payoff was never more evident than when Hornquist scored the Game 6 Stanley Cup winning goal in the 2017 Finals at Nashville. Now pause. This entire idea is a big example of hindsight, because when this trade was made, I do remember a lot of the response and reaction. A lot of people were pissed off, a lot of Penguins fans were feeling they got robbed, Nashville Predators fans were like, hey, wait a minute, we just traded away Patrick Hornquist for James Neal. That's awesome, let's go. And then, you know, that guy ended up eliminating you in the finals a few years later. How poetic is that? 
but you could see the train of thought that Mark Madden is going down as he goes out there and asks the question, is a trade like that out there right now? Maybe. Montreal right-winger Josh Anderson is one of the NHL's very few true power forwards. He's also mired in a grievous slump, having scored no goals in 22 games, this despite playing in a Canadian's top six and on their first power play. Anderson's fancy stats list him at 5.6 expected goals, ranking him 111th in the NHL. Zero goals has him tied for last in the league. And you won't believe where Mark Madden goes with this conversation. Anderson could probably be a net front presence on the Penn's top power play, and that has the potential to fix a lot. The ideal trade would be winger Ricard Raquel, no goals in 17 games, slump for slump. Raquel carries a $5 million cap hit, but he's on the LTIR. Anderson, because of his size, is a more valuable commodity. Montreal shouldn't want that deal. Here is the kicker. Would Kyle Dubas be willing to dangle Brian Rust? Or even Jake Gensel? Gensel is inked only through this season, and the Montreal Canadiens are unlikely to make the playoffs and thus hardly in the market for a rental. Rust is signed through 2028, and his cap hit is $5.1 million a year. Now here's the thing. When you suggest the idea of trading away Josh Anderson for one Jake Gensel? I don't care if Gensel expires in a year. I don't care if you're gonna have to re-sign a guy who's making six million dollars a year right now. Gensel is a point per game player, and he has been this literally for the last like seven years. He has been so good ever since debuting with the Penguins all the way back in 2016-17, winning a Stanley Cup. All it took was one year of NHL experience and then boom, Gensel was a point per game player afterwards. Even this season, he's got 24 points in 21 games played. I don't care if this guy is expiring now, if you even hint at the idea that Kent Hughes could trade away a player like Josh Anderson for Jake Gensel for crying out loud, Montreal, you've got yourselves a deal, baby, and they don't even need to think about it. Because at the end of the day, if you trade for a player like Jake Gensel, all you gotta do is give as much money as you can to this guy, and he's sticking around in your team. Gensel over Anderson in terms of quality of play, this player would add such a dynamic layer of offense to that top six in Montreal. If you consider next year and beyond, Gensel, Doc, Slavkovsky's getting better, Suzuki, Caulfield, this could be legitimately scary. And all for the costly low price of Josh Anderson, who is a net negative player in the bottom one percentile of NHL players this season in terms of caliber of play? What are you going out there saying that this would improve the Penguins? Like, sure, you could say that stylistically there is a different type of profile that might actually benefit the Pens. That, hey, Josh Anderson has a very particular set of skills that many people in the NHL do not possess. But the problem with that is, if he's not making those skills work with the Canadians, what makes you think they're going to work with the Pittsburgh Penguins? Like... I get it, you're playing with Crosby, Malkin, whatever, like, it's not a bad idea to suggest that a change of scenery for Anderson, playing with some better players, could actually revitalize the qualities that made him so valuable in the first place. But trading him for Jake Gensel? I'm surprised it's a Pittsburgh Penguins beat writer that's going out there and suggesting this. Like, Mark Madden, I love you, buddy, but come on. I don't think a lot of Penguins fans would like this idea, that's for sure. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. How do you feel about this article that was published by Mark Madden talking about the idea of a Josh Anderson for Brian Rust or Jake Gensel trade? I'm not even going to talk about Rust. I'm not going to talk about Raquel. I just wanted to talk about Gensel. That guy has been a superstar player for the Penguins, and you're suggesting the possibility that he could get traded for Josh Anderson. Hey, yeah, yeah, we gotta end this video while we're up ahead. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. The article is gonna be linked in the description. There are a few more things that are talked about in it if you wanted to read more about that on your own time. But for now, thoughts in the comment section about a Josh Anderson for Jake Gensel trade. If you're a Canadiens fan, do you do this, yes or no? If you're a Penguins fan, do you do this, yes or no? If you were told that this was going to be a repeat of the Neil Hornquist trade, does that change your opinion? Do you like this idea of changing away skill guys for power forward guys? Nifty guys for brutes. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed this video. And... Bye.